You know, we have productivity numbers today, which is why I picked this guest, David Wessel, Brookings Hutchins Center Director. Welcome, David. Good to be with you, Rick. All right, uh, if we look back over a year, productivity for the second quarter was up 1.3. If we look at it seasonally adjusted and annualized on a monthly, ba a quarterly basis, it was up 2.9. Tell me what you think's going on in productivity and what did you think of today's numbers? Well, today's numbers were really encouraging, but productivity is one of those numbers you should look at through the long end of the telescope. The fact is that despite some good numbers in the second quarter, the record over the last several years has been really disappointing, distressingly slow. As you know, rising productivity is everything. It's the magic elixir of rising living standards. And it's been lousy not only since the Great Recession, but since before the Great Recession. You know, productivity is simple. It's just kind of total output divided by man hours. But yet, in some of the very unique research your group is doing, mostly I'm reading about inflation. Tell me why. Right. Well, when you try and measure productivity output per hour of work, you don't just add up the number, the number of dollars we spend on something. You have to adjust it for inflation. Are we spending more to get a better car, or are we spending more to get the same car at a higher price? Well, that turns out that was once easy. It's much harder now. How do we deal with the fact that the iPhone does many different things? How do we figure in the amount of money that we are saving by buying online, uh, say, buying airline tickets online. And so uh, what economists are working really hard, but I think the government agencies are behind the curve, they're stretched for resources, and trying to keep the numbers up with the changing economy. You know, David, it seems to me, and I don't mean to sound cynical, but if we can't get inflation right, and it's such an important uh, aspect of trying to get productivity right, uh, are we just better to understand and follow trends of the way we currently measure, knowing that they're imperfect but we have a history? Yes, I think the, the first approximation is we have pretty good numbers. But if we are systematically overstating productivity, uh, overstating inflation, it means that incomes and wages have been rising a little bit more over the last decade or two or three than we've been led to believe. So it does really matter as we understand what's going on in the economy to get the prices right. I think they come pretty close, but I th what we're trying to do at the Hutchins Center is help them come even closer to what's really going on. Listen, David, if you had to make a guess outside of the issues we've discussed, mismeasurement, hard to get precise readings on things with online presence and new developments in Adonic accounting, but at the end of the day, are there any simple things that you could point out as to why productivity is a little soft or how it can be improved? Uh, no. I think one of the things that's really frustrating when you talk to economists is some of them are still trying to figure out why did productivity growth slow in, 1990, in 1973, and that's a couple generations ago. But we do know that if you don't have a lot of investment, public investment, business investment, individuals investing in their own human capital, it's bound to show up in the slowdown in productivity growth, and I think we've seen that over the last decade or so, and that's troubling. 